Now welcome on a very special guest to Knee Brace Radio, 2012 Olympian, Holly Mangold. Holly, how you doing? Great, guys. How are you? Hanging in there. I mean, I'm staying busy, <laughs> I guess. That's like what I feel like everyone says in these COVID times, like staying busy, you know, could be, you know, things could My be My new worse. fun saying is, sir, uh, what is it? Sir Thriving. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I, I a like- lot of people miss it and think I'm just saying surviving and then feel sorry for me and give me this like, oh, <laughs> it's okay. But I don't think anyone's as busy as Holly Mangold. Well, <laughs> I, nobody's as busy as I like to pretend like I'm busy. Like I could really stretch out a good work session and do nothing. <laughs> I so. mean, that's like with TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, it's like, you know, you do something for a second, then you look at your phone immediately and you're like, oh, 15 minutes just went by and I was just scrolling, doing absolutely nothing. So I, oh, I'm yeah. right there with you. The ADHD definitely kicks in. Like I uh, love telling my husband that I needed to get caught up on Instagram. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> like, what yeah. am I getting caught up on? But like you I do, I need to. You, you don't want to miss out. You're right. Yeah. Um, so we were just talking a little bit before recording and you said that you guys, you're starting some side hustles and everything. Let's get into Big Baddies. What is that? Can you explain it to our listeners? So Big Baddies came out of um, myself being a larger athlete and a larger athlete that is now retired and terribly out of shape. I tried to get back into fitness. You know, I was like, okay, this is the time I've had fun. I need to get back into fitness. And everywhere I went just was not for me either. I had issues because I, you know, I used to be a professional athlete. So in my mind, like I need to go and do all these things and do, you know, just overcommit myself. And then I'd get hurt and then I'd have to come back. And then I would try like a real fitnessy thing. So it didn't look like, you know, what I used to do at all. So I wouldn't have that mentality. And then I would get hurt because they don't really know how to handle a body my size. Um, so then I went and looked at a bunch of different, like, I mean, we, I researched anything. I was like, <laughs> give me workouts for fatties or give me, you know, like I put every word like morbidly obese, like how are they working out? And the, it was just so sad. Like there's just nothing, like there was nothing that was like, good that was geared towards larger people and we were like you know what why don't you I turned to my friend who does programming she's she actually um used to help people who were who failed their PT test for the military to get them into shape to fail that or to fail them to to pass um and she's done a lot of stuff so I was like why don't you program for me and then out of that we were like, you know what? I bet this is something other people would like. Like this is clearly missing from the market. Let's, let's put it out there and see if people would like it. And then people loved it. And I was so excited and it, it was super great. And it's been wonderful. It's just, we definitely had some growing pains. We, did, we were not prepared for how many people we got. And now we are like two months later. So it's great. We have a website now, um, but it's, it's super cool. And, and the, the big thing that's special with us not only are the workouts specifically made for larger bodies, but they're great for everyone. I will say that, like, you know, but they are made for larger bodies. Um, we also have myself or larger people demoing the movements. So you get to okay. see what it actually is gonna look like on a body that is similar to yours, if not a little bit larger. I'm, I'm bigger than the norm of bigger people. So it's still gonna be a little bit different, but at least, showing you because there's nothing worse than watching like a stick figure demo something and be like but my belly is not going to do that or like <laughs> my body doesn't move like gap that to allow that to go in there you know like it's just not going to happen so yeah so that's our that's our jam we're pretty mm-hmm. excited about it so without letting out any t- secrets or anything how does your workouts vary from where you were going originally to the gym or any place even online stuff So ours is very low impact, Um, especially now during COVID. We actually are, the workouts are specifically made to be done at home. So they require no equipment or if if it doesn't require equipment, it's stuff that you could grab around the house. Um, But we are specifically working around traditional ailments that can happen with larger bodies, which means immobility, um, back issues, knee issues, anything that's like that honestly I have, we, we kind of tailor that workout to me. And the biggest thing is like, 
it sucks when you go to a workout. I don't know if you guys do CrossFit or ever done that, but I used to do CrossFit and you go to, to do CrossFit, which I love. So I'm not even shitting on them um, at all. But, um, and then every single thing that you do, you have to modify. Like that mm-hmm. sucks. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you keep having to ask for modification. So basically we are, our mod, our workouts are the modifications, but they're just the workout. So everyone should be able to do them. If they're too easy for you, you can always make them a little bit harder, but they're done with not having to modify. So we, it's cool. And we test out every movement on me. So mm-hmm. if I can't do it, we're not going to program it. <laughs> Um, which isn't great because I can't do everything, but mm. I mean, I can do most things. So if, if it, I mean, if my belly is in the way, it's not going to be programmed. So founder and crash test dummy at the same time, basically. Yeah, it's the worst. <laughs> and there's, there's a video I posted on my Instagram, which is really funny. We were trying to do like hip thrusts on like a bench, but I didn't put like a pad down or anything. And you just see me going like, I'm trying to thrust and my eyes are just like, this is fine. Everything's fine. It was not working. <laughs> so um, to, your, to your point before where you were talking about the, the workouts that you had seen before um, that were kind of sad and stuff like that. I mean, like when, whenever you used to be a professional athlete, you know, you, you might be a, you know, a bigger athlete, but that, that you're, you were a power lifter. So, you know, you, you knew how to move your own weight and how to move your own body. And so I feel like some of those workouts are geared towards people that are almost like bedridden. And, and, and yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the worst thing. Mm -hmm. Sorry. It it just, that's, what's so frustrating to me is when we were looking it up, they, they would have the workouts, like the person sitting in a chair, like raising their arms up, Mm -hmm. which Mm -hmm. is like great. If you can't stand up or, or, you know, you are bedridden or something's like that, but there's a, there's a significant population of just larger people who are not um, geriatrics and and can move their body. They're just out of shape like a normal person, but they're just larger and out of shape. And and I shouldn't even say normal, normal body, whatever <laughs> you want to call it. Yeah, because my, my mom um, is, is kind of similar to you where my mom's always been a larger woman, but my mom's also one of the most athletic people I've ever seen in my entire life. My mom can move across a kitchen to smack me in the back of the head faster than anyone Love I've ever it. seen what in my chance. entire life. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and I, I feel like that's, that's the same sort of category she falls into where my mom can do most things. My mom could do a split until she was 45. But, you know, but, <laughs> but she, if, if you asked her to go, you know, run a mile because, you know, that's what the rest of the, the group is doing, that's just not, it's not plausible. And so I, I can appreciate a, a program that is out there to, to, to fit the people that are, that they can move and they're just larger. Yeah, no, I, pre- yeah, it's so exciting. It's, it's something like, I, I think you'll find more large people that are, have a background in athletics. They mm-hmm. have like, they, they can move, they have moved. And it's this weird misconception that if you're large, you clearly don't do anything and that mm-hmm. that's just not true and like i'm i'm on the whole other side where i am very large and i need to lose weight personally working with my my doctor that's the plan for me but there are people like who like when i was a competitive athlete i was still 300 pounds but i was in the best shape of my life and people looked at me then and were like oh she probably can't move, you know, but I could, yeah. but I'm also larger and those things, you know, like you just need, it's crazy because I get so frustrated because everybody talks about how we have an obesity problem in this country. And yet we shame larger bodies when they're trying to work out and we don't provide things for larger people, which I'm like, that's so counterproductive. Like you want to you want us to be more shape as a country and I move and be active then make stuff for larger people. Maybe, exactly. maybe the stationary bike seat shouldn't fit literally in my butt crack. I mean, I don't, I mean, every time that I get off of one of those bikes, I just feel like I've just been, I, I don't know how Violated. inappropriate I'm allowed to be on this. <laughs> no, let it cut as loose. much as you want. I was just going to say like, it's just, it. I feel violated. Yeah. And it's, 
it's awful. And you know, the, one of the worst things is I went to, um, oh God, I always hate calling people out, but it's not really their fault. I mean, mm -hmm. these are, these are skinny people just not knowing how to deal with larger people. But I went to Orange Theory and when I was rowing, the, my feet, I'm so wide and like where my feet go, I've, I've always had an issue with rowers. Like they, their feet are right next to each other. And I'm like, mm -hmm. if you've got, if you're tall or just bigger and you need your feet out here, you're screwed. And I've always just kind of been able to work with it. But now with my belly so big, I would put my feet down next to it and turn it into like a back and arms exercise, yeah. which just wrecked my lower back. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I kept telling them that I was having an issue with this. And they were like, Meh, I don't know what to tell you. And I was like, meh. Or oh, keep, keep trying the modifications. Yeah, or like you could <laughs> ride your bike. And I was like, well, maybe we could do something that like mimics a row or like, how can we figure this? It was just so frustrating. And I'm one of those people that even though I know modifications for things, if I'm going to a place and paying for them to do something, I expect them to, I go, I dive all in. So mm -hmm. I'm like a hundred, I was always a very coachable athlete. So I expect you to tell me what to do. Right. And right. it just, they, there just wasn't a lot for it. So this might be a little bit more of a mindset question. Cause I, I, after I was a college athlete, loose terms, division two bench warmer, but hey. after I graduated, I noticed I gained a bunch of weight. I actually lost like 30 pounds during quarantine just because like boredom, just going on walks and eating better. Cause I couldn't oh. go out to eat and stuff. Good for you. Love but it. why do I you did the opposite? Yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Why do you think uh, a lot of athletes when they're done will gain weight? I know for me, I was just like so sick and fucking tired of being told to work out like 5 a.m. Then, you know, conditioning after I just kind of like in my own head revolted against myself. No one was like telling me to work out, but I think I was just so burnt out. Do you think that's part of it or do you have any logical explanation? I'm specifically, I will say for me, I've always been a large person. So working out kept my largeness in check. Mm -hmm. um, I also had to watch what I eat. People don't believe this, but like when I was 300 pounds, I was still watching what I was eating. Yeah. I mean, I, I had larger portions, but I still tried to eat healthy and, and, you know, chose better things for training and all of that stuff. It was just a lot of food. Um, and then when I stopped, I was like, fuck everything. I'm going to do nothing and eat everything. And it was super fun. It was two years of just pure joy. And then I realized that that's not a great way to go. Like I packed on like hundreds of pounds. It was not great. Um, and, and I realized that I need to fix, you know, figure out what I'm doing. But I think for a normal person, um, you're just, you're working out so much that you can eat a lot differently and then you stop working out and you keep eating the same. I mean, it's very, and it's so easy to be like, well, just eat less. Well, that's such a great idea. <laughs> it just doesn't happen all the time. Like you're just, you're so conditioned to be a certain way. I mean, I, when I was at the training center, we worked out, you know, six, six hours a day um, and, and eight respectively towards that. And then all of a sudden you're not. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's shocking how quickly the weight can come on. Like, it's just, it's so quick that, that turnaround. And then once you're, and then I feel it's terrible because once you get like my size big, you're like, what's well, another 20 pounds? Like, it's really not that big of a deal. Like mm -hmm. once you get up into those percentages, that's like nothing, um, which isn't great because it allows you to be more lenient of like, eh, it's not that bad. No, yeah. If you go back and look through my Twitter history, you could probably see like four or five times where I've tweeted, it's way more fun to get out of shape than it is getting back in shape. And oh, you're right. Sure. Like once you like, you're like, ah, oh, you know, and I guess normal people will do this too when they're, you know, on a diet and then they go on vacation, they cut loose for a week. And it's like, oh, it's so much fun. And then you realize like, I, I, I know for me, I was working 4 p.m. to 1 a.m. I was like, I can just eat fast food all the time because like that's the only thing open. And then all of a sudden you look down, and you're like, oh, I definitely gained like, you know, 15 pounds in the last like three months it's like it yeah. definitely becomes an issue and I think we're learning like we started working with this um nutritionist uh or dietitian I never know what the right word is for that it's one of those she, <laughs> she does food whatever that is <laughs> she does the food uh, I, I like yeah that. the foods um and she's working on kind of looking at food differently and I love her sp perspective she's like 
she doesn't believe that there's bad food. Like she's like, and, and the way she talks about it, I, I'm like, oh yeah, it makes a ton of sense to me. So I think we just have like this weird thing around eating anyways, like it, we should be able just to like live and eat and make, you know, good choices, but you know, not go crazy. And I think a lot of us are zero to a hundred like myself. And so I usually go like crazy where I'm like, oh, I'm going <laughs> to 1200 calories a day and it's going to be great. And then that lasts for like three days and I'm like, fuck the world. I need everything. And then I'm just eating everything. So it's, it's been a bad yo-yo, but um, hopefully we'll get, we'll see, see me on the other side of that one. We'll see. I'm sure we will. Yeah. But I mean, that's specifically, I mean, this is specifically towards me and, and what I would like to do for big baddies our whole thing is like th that's the other worst thing is like is if you look for larger workouts for larger people you just get shot in the face with all kinds of diet stuff and go on this diet and this and i don't want anyone to feel like they need to lose weight with this workout like this work these workouts if you lose weight and you want to great if you don't lose weight fine. Are you moving more? Are you healthier? Are you happier? Do you feel like you're, you're getting stronger in your movements? Great. That's what I want. I want people to feel more in shape and more um, capable of doing the stuff they want to do. And right, their, because... their own weight journey is between them and their doctors. Right. And, and similar to what we, what we mentioned before, you know, it, even if you're big, if you can move, that makes a world of difference. Yeah. And you can never tell health by looking at someone. Honestly, you can't because, um, you know, if you looked at me, you would think I would have way more health problems than I do. Maybe I might have those health problems in the future if I don't fix some things and, and work with that. But you, you don't know, like nobody knows. So, mm -hmm. and I could look at someone tiny and think, oh, they look pretty healthy, but they're probably not. They're eating chicken nuggets every day. And, you know, down in a bottle of wine every night. Who knows? Like mm -hmm. you just never know. So I try, I want big baddies to be a place where you don't, you don't have to be a certain way. We're not pushing you to be something, but we're here to help you move. Yeah. Absolutely. We always joke around that we say CrossFit saved my dad's life because he was a bigger guy, got into CrossFit and lost a bunch of weight. But um, he was at the doctor when he was at his heaviest and the doctor walked in, he was shaking his head. And my dad was like, oh, something good's not happening. He's just like, kept looking at the paperwork and stuff. He looked at my dad. He's like, it just doesn't make any sense. He's like, you shouldn't be this healthy. And my dad's like, that might've been like the worst thing. He's like, basically it was a family guy skit where he was just like, you're just fat. Like that's all the doctor could say to him. But um, no, you're hundred percent right. You yeah. never know. Somebody could have, you know, be 150 pounds and in shape, but have like, you know, a horrible, you know, have a heart issue or something versus somebody that may be out of shape, you know, in print air quotes, whatever you want to say and be healthy. It's, yeah. You can't tell. And we never talk about like emotional health. Like I would much rather be like large me and have my emotional health than some of these, you know, much smaller people with a lot more emotional problems. Like, mm -hmm. and that's not like shaming anyone for their issues, but I just, I'm very happy with my overall self. Um, mm -hmm. And I'd much rather just be dealing with my weight issue than a lot of other people may have some other issues that they have to deal with. So I just think judging on someone's health just purely off of appearance is, is crazy to me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, so that, that actually kind of leads me into a question that I have. Um, something I bet you've never been asked about is, uh, oh is about your time on True Life. Oh, God. That was I, so many th years ago. That was so many years ago, but I was a True Life junkie. And I remember seeing you on True Life, and I thought it was one of the best episodes ever are you still in contact with the person that you helped? The person that I helped? Yes. Oh God, who did I help? So let me preface this with, I've only ever seen it once. Really? You've only ever seen it once? Oh yeah. I don't like to watch my, I, it's super funny for all the things that I've done. Mm -hmm. I don't like being filmed and I don't like watching it. <laughs> so I really never watch the stuff that I'm in. Okay. I'm right there with you. I never listen to the podcast back or anything like Nick does all the editing, thankfully, because um, I don't like hearing my own voice. I don't like hearing what I said. Once I say something, I just kind of forget about it. No, because sometimes I watch myself and I'm like, Holly, you're such a douche. Like, what's wrong with you? But then I like, I also like being a douche. So I don't want to like judge myself for my douchiness. <laughs> I just want to be it. 
Was that sure. weird having those cameras though in front of you at that time of your life? Um, for sure. I mean, I was a kid, so it was it was very weird. And I it made me really um rude, I guess if that's the word, because I hate like I'm rude to camera people, which is so mean because they're just doing their job. Mm -hmm. But like I hated when I'd go into somewhere and I'd feel like I was getting in everyone's way. And I was like, the cameras had to go here and people had to walk around the cameras. So I got to the point where I was like, fuck it, just walk through them. Like if you see, and it's so mean, but I just, oh, I got so uncomfortable. I didn't, yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't imagine because, you know, being like, we're around the same age, like the MTV era, or VH1 era, where there was all those reality shows. I can't imagine being a teenager and being filmed or, you know, in, even in my early 20s. Like, first off, it probably would have went straight to my head. Second off, like going and looking back at it, I would never be able to do well, it's funny because I, I, um, they actually, after we did that episode, I was contacted about doing a series. Oh, really? That was going to be about me mm -hmm. and, and the Olympics and all of that stuff. Um, and I turned it down because <laughs> I really didn't want to do it. That's understandable I mean, though. I really didn't want to. I mean, I wonder. So I, I, I'll, you know, hand up. I haven't seen that episode in years. I thought you were the you were one of those uh, one of the people they bring in to help someone in need. Oh no 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 that's um that's I think that's made. Mm -hmm. Yeah no I was um so it's actually funny the the episode that they filmed. Right. I didn't realize I was going to be on True Life, so it was actually filmed as a documentary, and it was supposed to be about me playing football. Right, it right, right. Nothing to do with Olympic weightlifting in the beginning. Um, and then as when they packaged it up to sell it to someone, they ended up selling it to MTV. And I was actually the first person to ever get paid for being an episode of um, MTV True Life, I think it was what it's called. Yeah, it's MTV True Life. I thought I thought you were the person that comes in on Maid. And I thought you helped. I, I I don't know why this must be some kind of fever dream that I had. I had it. So in many my people head. think I was on maid. What's that? Yeah. So many people thought I was on maid. Like they would come up to me and they'll be like, "Oh my god, I saw you on MTV Made," and I was like, Not "Don't me. judge me," and then leave. <laughs> I never correct them because it doesn't. I mean, what does it matter? It, it's one of those MTV shows. It's an MTV show. Down. It's an MTV reality show. Yeah. So when they were, when you were doing your Olympic lifting and even up into the Olympics, I'm guessing it was a lot different camera work at that point, right? Well, so it's funny because they stopped filming. They started filming when I was like 16 and they stopped filming when I was like 19. So they actually only saw me go to like junior worlds. Um, they weren't actually, they weren't filming. I didn't realize they were filming for so long. Yeah, they filmed me at Pan Am's too, I, mm -hmm. I think. Pan Am Championship, or yeah, that one was crazy. We got stuck, um, the volcano erupted and there was mm -hmm. mudslides, there was all kinds of crazy things. But um, there, all of it was the same person. I mean, it was the same person. It was this, They were, it was supposed to be a documentary about, that's what I kind of think made me so mad about it. And maybe that's why I never watched it again, but it was supposed to be about a female football player and I was also unknown. not the greatest title. Well, so yeah, that's, um, yeah, yeah, that's not great. The, uh, my father used to mm -hmm. call me that the big girl. So uh -huh. that's why they chose that name. Um, okay. which I've now come to embrace big, right. which is probably why I called our thing big baddies. Um, right. Right. But it definitely, it, but in, in 2011 with, you know, 19 year old Holly, I'm sure that didn't feel great. Oh yeah, I was fine. I've always been big. <laughs> like being big has never been a thing that I, I don't feel shame for it because right, right. I don't feel anything wrong with it. But I would be more uncomfortable if they I don't know. There's so many other names they could have called me. But right, I right. went I went on um the Today Show mm -hmm. when I was like 15 for being a female football player. Right. And after that show. There was this blog back in the day. I think it was called Deadspin. Yep. You guys that remember that? Out. Yep, that's yep, right. That sounds about they right. It's still around, believe it or not. Oh, really? Yeah, they're just that like, fire yeah, they're, yeah, oh, they're not great. Well, 
that I haven't seen them in forever, but they did a whole thing on me and it was so mm -hmm. mean. And there was just pages of people like tearing me apart. And I was a 15 year old at that time. And it was a tough like week. And then I think after I got past that, now I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like yeah. you can't say anything worse to me than those grown ass men said to me when I was 15. So I'm good to go. Hey, it's similar to what I say. No one's meaner to me than I am. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Well, see, that's, I'm a little different. I'm so nice to myself. <laughs> I'm way too nice. Like I call my husband all the time. Um, I won't call it him, but I'll say, oh, you're being such a jackass. Right. And then he'll hear, like, I didn't realize I was calling myself a jack wagon. I was being so much nicer to myself. Like, if I'll be like, oh, Holly, jack wagon. And he was like, how are you going to call me a jackass and you a jack wagon? Well, I, I like me. Like, <laughs> I'm going to be nicer to me. I always say no one makes me laugh harder than myself. So I'm right oh, there with you. Yeah, for sure. So you being a high school football player, how was that? Was it like, obviously growing up playing sports, you play little league um, with females on your team, but once you get to a certain age, usually they'll go play softball. Um, I never played football. So with that how time. old are you? 20. I'm going to be 28 tomorrow. Oh, okay. Okay. So that cracked me up because I, like nowadays you can have females in your little league mm -hmm. right there was nobody playing football when i was younger mm -hmm. yeah so for a hot second i thought you were real young but no, no. <laughs> not that you aren't still young um <laughs> but yeah i mean it was it was interesting um i don't know it was just my life i don't know if i since i didn't do anything different i don't know what it's like to not do that okay I definitely love the person that I am because of it. Mm -hmm. um, I have a very thick skin because, you know, if you really, honestly, if you play football for a long time, you realize that everybody makes fun of everybody for everything. Mm -hmm. You're going to just get it naturally and then a thicker skin naturally. But then when you're also a female, you're going to learn. I mean, there's some stuff that now in like 2020 view, I look back and I'm like, oh, <laughs> problematic that's abuse yeah, like that's, that's bad yeah. that's not right like that shouldn't have happened but like luckily for me it was never anything so traumatic to like mess with me too bad I'm sure mm -hmm. we all have some sort of issues like who knows why I, I you know I married a straight up nerd and maybe that's because I had to get away from the football guys I don't know <laughs> like I just I there's some things that I have seen that I probably should have never seen mm -hmm. and heard. But um, I actually am in the process. One of the many things that I'm doing that I need to like probably chill and stop doing is I am writing um, a book about my time. Just mm -hmm. basically it's about my life, but what it was like being a female football player. I mean, that's that's probably one of the, nobody ever asked me about that anymore. And I, that's probably one of the most interesting things about me just because I've, I've seen so much stuff and it was so weird and right because I mean it's, it's whenever you you know someone talks about you know like this past year you had Sarah Fuller the kicker for Vanderbilt and and everybody everybody was like oh my gosh Sarah Fuller you know it's amazing and stuff like that I mean say what you will she was a kicker you, yeah, were, you were in the in, trenches you, you were in the trenches you were you were an offensive lineman correct yes I was um and I being the the high school female that was that I was and like jock I was very cocky about the fact I was in the trenches like ah fuck these kickers like mm -hmm. I'm a girl that's in it <laughs> and now I realize like man you you've been through it all like you know like if you're so I get it um I definitely remember the kicker on our team um would eat like starburst out of his jock like while <laughs> we were practicing so I definitely have like a pure hate towards kickers for the fact that they get to do that um, but I know I want to eat Starburst out of my jock, right? Yeah, I mean, that would be great. I'd be all for it. I probably would have shoved it in my bra, but either way. Yeah, I was going to say, sports bra seems way, to be yeah, like, easier access. Had so much stuff in between there. Um, but she, the, the pure abuse that she's probably had to deal with is insane. Mm -hmm. So great for her. And I think that's awesome. Um, I am excited when we start seeing, like, this is how it's going to have to start. You're going to have right. to have some kickers get through that, that barrier. And now we have a female you know referee mm -hmm. we have some female coaches and then you're going to start seeing your way and then you'll start more um combat position but it, it is 
it is quite tough. Like, right. you know, in high school, there was this moment, like all through grade school, I like kicked everyone's ass. And then freshman year of high school, I was still kicking ass. Sophomore year, a little bit, you know, that's kind of where you start going against those, those seniors. Right. And sophomore year is probably when I realized like, oh my God, I'm a 15 year old girl going against 18 year old like men. It was, right. it was a bit tough. And that's why I got into weightlifting was to try to get stronger, to be better at football. It's also like that weird period too, because females tend to, at least from what I remember, hit puberty a little bit earlier than guys. So I remember playing baseball against girls that were taller and they were more athletic. And then all of a sudden, like 14, 15, 16 guys, like kind of start to catch back up. So I can definitely understand what you're saying. When you're in the trenches, it's got to be tough because you're going against guys with beards at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're straight up shaving before the game and I'm just going (laughs) to come on in and compete against you, but it's, it wasn't, it wouldn't have been as tough if I didn't have the obstacles of people who were not playing with me, hating me. Mm -hmm. So like the, I used, I said this in an interview once and I still stand by it where I was like, men are super simple. Like if you can beat them, they'll respect you. And it, it, most of the time that is true. Um, so I didn't really have any issues with the guys I was competing with, or I keep saying competing, playing with. Um, it was the coaches, it was the parents, it was other coaches, other players that don't actually play with me. You know, there was all that, mm-hmm. that was the big issue. And I had a coach that was just the worst. Like, I remember I got through all four years and I was just, I was really proud at that moment that I told me I wouldn't last through high school and it just wouldn't happen and all that stuff. And my senior banquet, getting my, you know, my last varsity letter and the guy shook my hand and was like, I still don't think girls should ever play football. And I remember thinking like, I don't give a fuck, bro. Like, why did you tell that to me right now? Like, why, why, why was this, why was this your big moment to to take a stand against girls playing sports? Oh, you got me. Took me down a peg. Yeah. It's like a 50 year old guy who's moonlighting at 7-Eleven. He really feel like the need to say that to you. Yeah. That was super frustrating. And I just remember being like, cool, bro. (laughs) Like, I don't, I, it's just, uh, it was so frustrating. So that's what led you into Olympic lifting then and your journey to the Olympics then it sounds like. Yeah. So actually I started with powerlifting um, Mm -hmm. to get stronger for, I was also in track and field. So I started powerlifting to do track and field and football. And then through powerlifting, um, the first powerlifting meet I went to, I won a bunch of stuff and was like, Ooh, I think I might be pretty good at this. Um, and then, um, it was so crazy. I actually won third as a team with my total because wow. it was not, well, yeah. I mean, also not a ton of depth, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> fair enough. Old. Yeah. But, um, it actually made me start a powerlifting team so that we could win. Cause I was mm-hmm. like, well, if I can get third, you're like, I just need warm bodies out here. Like for the other need, two. Yeah. So we actually had a really awesome power. It was super fun. But anyways, I, um, always wanted to go to the Olympics. Like that had been a dream since I was a kid. And every sport I went into, I was like, this is the one it's going to take me there. None of them were going to, like, I remember thinking that with diving, like, I just need to get like one, another five foot eight, 300 pound female and we'll synchronize dive and we'll make it. Like, I was just so confident in my ability to like, just do it. Um, but when I found out, like, I was really good at powerlifting, I was like, Ooh, I wonder if this is the Olympics Mm -hmm. and then found Olympic weightlifting, um, and went from there like it was just as soon as I started doing Olympic weightlifting I was like oh this is the one so do do you have a do you have a favorite lift and a least favorite lift um I used to snatch used to be my favorite um because it was super like technical and very graceful very fun Mm -hmm. and then um I liked clean and jerk just because you could do a lot more weight so it sounds cooler Mm -hmm. um but it's also really fun to drop the bar from above your head Oh, for sure. Every time. I mean, I'm one of those people that slams the bar down hard. See, that's when when you were talking about going to different places, trying to work out. The first thing I thought of was I bet Planet Fitness hates you. Well, I wouldn't I I wouldn't go into Planet Fitness for that kind of um, shenanigans. I I don't generally like Globo gyms. Yeah, it's fair. Any of that stuff. Fair, fair. 
Um, there's always that creepy guy that comes running out of nowhere, like to to spot you. <laughs> Didn't like, ask for this. I'm I'm doing 15 pounds. It's so crazy. Like you think at a certain like this is super wrong of me to say, especially in like 2020, 2021, wherever we are. But like you would hope, like being a 300 plus female. Like, I don't have to deal with creepers. Like, isn't that one of the benefits of being large is like, you don't have to deal with creepers. That's what I was hoping. It's not the case. Like, I couldn't imagine being like society's ideal body type in one of those gyms. Like, they got to come out of the woodworks. Like, you do anything and they're just coming at you for like, let me spot you. Can I help you? Is there an issue? Yeah, or or just like the the, the glances. Like, the guys that are trying to like look at the lifting, they're like... <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, it's pretty crazy. I just, uh, yeah, I haven't been to one of those gyms in a long time, but those those were some fun times. So where did you lift on your journey? Because I saw on your Instagram, you posted something about you were lifting in a YMCA. Um, is that like, was that like your home base? Is that how you like, you kind of grinded your way to the Olympics? Um, yeah, so my, the club I was in, I, I was with Columbus Weightlifting and they were outside of a YMCA. So we had three platforms and like a fourth platform that was basically just for squatting because it was like half. Mm -hmm. And then all in front of us were all these like machines where just normal YMCA people could go in and, and use. So you'd be snatching and then there would be this dude just sitting there doing like crunches, staring at you right in front of you. Um, and it was great. Like I loved working out at that YMCA. Um, it is definitely, uh, different than what people have now and it, it's funny because my athletes have a much better situation now in my gym and every time that they complain I'm that cranky old person it's like back in my day I was in a YMCA so you could settle down <laughs> may not be the best coach <laughs> hey, no that's fine look I, I used to do CrossFit and I used to absolutely hate when people would be like you're doing a great job it's like no you need to come over here and be like you are doing absolutely awful like you need to step it up right now. Like that's how, like once you told me I'm doing good, I'd be like, oh, then I'm done for the day. Like I'm gonna go ahead and re-rack these weights and I'll be out the door. Well, then I'm great. Cause I, I almost never, my big, like my way to say that someone's doing good is I go, that's not bad. I didn't even realize <laughs> that that's what I would say as a compliment. But it's like, that's not bad. You're doing, You're doing right. decent today. <laughs> yeah, that would be, I would be like the world's jackedest man. I'd be a, a Mr. Olymp or an Olympian or Mr. Olympian, whatever it is. There but. you go. <laughs> But uh, so as we wrap up here, do you, what do you recommend as the first step for someone who's wanting to make a physical change in their life? Who's wanting to like take that first step for, you know, to, to make that healthier lifestyle choice? I mean, if you have insurance, check out a doctor. Mm -hmm. That's my first thing, just to be like, check where you're at, see your blood pressure, get all that stuff, make sure you're good to go. Um, but then I would do some research, follow, find out online what it is you're interested in. And oh my God, this is the thing that I, that kills me that people don't take advantage of. Every single gym, every single fitnessy whatnot has some sort of try this out for a week or try, try a workout or do something, go to every single one of them. Like they're free. Just figure out what you like and, and change it up. I think one of the tough things that can happen is you can get into something and then you get bored with it or it's just not, you know, you want to do something, change it up, do something else. I mean, that's, that's what I love about what we're offering with big baddies. We can be your main workout source, but we also can just be a side thing. Like you could go into personal classes and do whatever. And our stuff is still going to be beneficial to you. Like mm -hmm. as a, you know, just a little extra on top of there. Um, but it's, just try out everything. Like it's all fun. It can be fun. Mm -hmm. Find something that you're interested in and go for it. Absolutely. I think that, and then I know at least for me personally, I feel like getting in shape is it's a, as much mental as it is physical. Oh, for sure. I mean that I can't even, because I'm still like semi failing at the whole like food part of it. Um, I'm not really great at advising on because I'm like, eh, I'm still having a tough time of navigating how I can just eat to live and not like every single time I eat, it's a, it's a party. Like I love food, big fan of food, 
So when I eat something, I want it to be delicious. <laughs> like, I don't want to just eat something to eat. I want it to be like choice. And um, so I think that that could be really tough. But overall mental of like just getting yourself to the gym or like getting yourself like I I give myself so many excuses like if I don't have the right like oh my clothes aren't clean or like mm, I don't like these tights these aren't the best tights so I'll just not go in today <laughs> like it's so yeah. easy for me to make excuses for myself like that so honestly I would find what I like to call um and other people do as well but accountability buddy like my business partner is my accountability buddy. Like mm -hmm. she will call me and be like, did you do our workout today? Cause we need to do it. You should probably do it. <laughs> you know, like yeah. you need someone that's on that kind of journey with you. Yeah. And then once you get in that, once you get like the momentum going, I feel like it helps a lot. Oh, too. for sure. Like once you pass like that one week or two week hump, you're like, damn, I don't want to fucking work out. But it's like, but um, I'm on like a, you know, a 10 day streak or whatever. Oh, for or sure. Mine's three weeks. If I can do it for three weeks, I can keep on doing it for a long time. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing sober March this month and four, four days in, I'm still oh. like, man, I, there's some tequila downstairs. <laughs> See, I gave up, um, I gave up carbonation, um, for Lent because okay. I am obsessed with Coke zero mm -hmm. and I drink it aggressively and nothing <laughs> kind of gets me to give up stuff um more like like the pressure of religion to like <laughs> just pressure it into me god's so i i mean i was raised catholic so the yeah. catholic shame and guilt is mm -hmm. all there and so oh, i was very just, real very yeah. real yeah so i was just trying to like use that for something beneficial so i'm i'm on day i don't know like 14 no carbonation and i nice. i don't i don't know if it's worth to live without carbonation <laughs> yeah. i still haven't decided that yet it's like you got seven days left and you'll be good to go <laughs> yeah i mean I, yeah hopefully once i hit that three week mark it will be better but every day i wake up like it'd be better if there was kind of zero in my hand <laughs> <laughs> just being real with you all right holly well thank you so much for coming on um you just, this is a lot of fun we can hope we can talk to you again soon uh where can the fi people find you online yeah uh bigbaddies.com super fun um i'm also on instagram holly with an ey super weird mangold um but i'm I, I put some stuff out i hope it's good it is you never know must follow i'll go ahead and throw a must follow there for there you we go. <laughs> so but thank you so much for coming on we appreciate it yeah thank you so much for having me this is great absolutely take it easy see ya <laughs>